Hi guys, thanks for joining me on Making with Marilyn. On this video, I'm going to make a cute little t-shirt for a girl that's getting ready to become a teenager. Now, unfortunately, she's quarantined. So the shirt is going to have a becoming a teenager and being quarantined theme. Now, I found this little shirt at Dollar General. And I live in a very small town, less than 3,000 people in the whole town. And so we are very blessed to have at least a Dollar General. And that's where I found this t-shirt. Now her favorite colors are yellow and then teals and blues. So we're going to have a really pretty combination. We're going to have this bright yellow. <laughs> and it's kind of hard to see with the glare of the light, but it is bright. And then we're going to have this really pretty kind of turquoise glitter vinyl. So you're going to have the gray, the turquoise, and then some accents in this yellow. Now, in addition to the HTV and the shirt, I'm going to use my Cricut standard grip mat, a Teflon sheet, my heat press, and some various tools. I have my brayer, my scissors, and this little weeding tool. In addition, I'm going to use my computer, Cricut Design Space, and my Cricut Maker. Now, my friend called me, and her daughter, who's getting ready to turn 13, is quarantined right now. And so she sent me a picture. It looked kind of like this top two-thirds of the design that I have here. And she said, can you make this? And I said, of course I can. And then we added this little hashtag saying here. So let me show you how I made this. We're just going to start over. Okay, we're going to click on text. And I'm going to type out 13. And the font that I used is called Starfish. So I'll go up here to search fonts and I'll just type in Starfish. And it's right here. So the first thing I want to do is start decreasing my letter spacing. Okay, now you see that the letters come together in some areas, but not others. So the EEN looks pretty good. Once I have something that starts to look good, I go ahead and hit ungroup. Now this little E needs to move over a little bit. I guess the N could move over just a little bit, but that looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and select those three letters and group those together. Now I can move those over to the T. And then I'll just move everything by hand. Then I want to make my T just a little bit larger. Okay, that looks good. So I'll go ahead and select all of that and I'll weld it together. And then let's just pick some new colors. Let's go with a red. And the next thing that I typed was the word AND, and I did all caps. And for this one, I changed it. Let's go up here to Apple SD Gothic. There it is, Apple SD Gothic Neo. And then we're going to change that a different color. It really doesn't matter what color I go with, but let's go with a purple. All right, so my 13 needs to be quite a bit larger. And then I have the word and. Then the next thing I'm going to type is the quorum and then ed. And for that, I use the starfish font again. So I'll click on text. I'm going to go back and find starfish again. All right, let's get it off the red so we can see it better. So again, we're just going to decrease the letter spacing. Okay, some of these letters look pretty good, some don't. So I'm going to select the E and the D. Oh, I have to ungroup it first. There we go. I'll select the E and the D. Let's move those away. And then I can see that the D needs to be closer to the E. So I have those the way I want those. So I'll select both of those and I'll weld. Now my R needs to come over. Pretty much everything to the left of where I'm working now needs to come over. 
Let's move this U down just a little bit and then the Q down just a little bit. Okay, so I'll select all these letters. Whoops, I don't want 13. <laughs> so if I have that problem, I can just select my letters, hold the command down, and just click on the letter. And I'll go ahead and weld those. Now in the theme I'm using, this would also be purple. And it would go just about right there. It needs to be a lot larger. Then also this will move over. I don't know exactly how far until I type the word teen. So let's do that. Click on text again with all caps. Type in T-E-E-N for teen. And then for this I used Arial Black. So I'll search for Arial, spelling it correctly, <laughs> and it's right here. All right, I don't want it to be a lot wider, but I want it to be a lot taller. So I'm going to unlock it and then just drag it down. And I'll go a little bit bigger. All right, let's move that over into place. And then that, in my theme, would match the red. And the last thing I want to do is add this hashtag 13th birthday. And for that, I also use the Apple SD Gothic. So let's go back to text. I'll do the number sign. And then 13th birthday. I'll go up to change the font. And again, I'm going to search for Apple, and it's right here, Apple SD Gothic Neo. All right, let's, whoops, that is not what I wanted to move. Okay, let's see if we can grab what I want and then drag it down. And then it needs to be bigger. I think I'd like to decrease the letter spacing. And then I'll unlock it and just drag it so it's a little taller. Now I want that to be red, so I'll go up here to the color and select red. Then I'm just going to play with these and kind of get them where I really like them. I want the 13 to be bigger. And then I want to make sure that this word quarantined is pretty close to centered under the 13. And I can tell right now it's really not. It needs to go to the left little bit so I'll just select each part of that and I want the red teen to actually cover over the tail of the end and then I'll move the ED over okay so that's pretty much what I'm going for right there so let me go back up to the one that I spent so much time on now before I do let me show you if I come down here let me show you what happens if I click make it. Okay, so this red layer is all over the place, and so is the purple layer. So before you can cut this, you would want to select everything in red. So I'll select 13, hold down the command, add the teen. It looks like everything else is included, but it's not. You can see over here, it's really not selected and then add the 13th birthday. We'll attach those together. Then I want to go back and select the purple things. And if I can't select it over here, then I'll go over here and I'll click on what I want. So I have the and, hold the command down, get the quorum and the ED, and again, we'll select attach. Now what Attach does is it makes it where it cuts out just the way you see it on the screen. So now let's click Make It and I'll show you the red screen looks good and the purple screen. And of course I would lay this where it needs to be on the shirt. For now I'm going to cancel that because I spent so much time getting this exactly the way I wanted it that I'm going to actually cut 
the blue and the yellow. So I am going to click make it and I'm going to go to my blue layer. I need to make sure I mirror it. I'll go to my yellow layer and I'll mirror it. All right, I want to start with my glitter though. So I have my blue layer selected. I'm going to click continue. Now I want to see what kind of glitter HTB I have to choose from. So I'm just going to type in glitter. And here's glitter iron on. Now this assumes it is Cricut brand, but I've used it before for the Caesar brand and it works beautifully. So I'm going to select that, click done, and we're ready to cut. Now when I go back to the yellow layer, I'm going to change the setting to everyday iron on. It's not as thick as the glitter iron on, so I'll use a different setting. The first final I'm going to cut is this gorgeous Caesar glitter. Here's the tag for it. It is called Jade. That's the color. And then I like to print out a label with the instructions here. Preheat for two to three seconds. Press it at 320 for 15 to 20 seconds. And it's a hot peel. On most heat transfer vinyls, there's a shiny side that's your carrier sheet. And then the vinyl side. This is the back side of the vinyl. So we'll just lay this down on our cutting mat. And this is where the brayer comes in handy. You can really press it down much better with the brayer. A rolling pin would work as well. I checked my blade earlier, it was clean, so I'm ready to send this to the maker. All right, I'll go ahead and unload this, and then I'm gonna walk back over to my computer and change the setting for the yellow HTV to everyday iron on. So I'll go ahead and remove the mat from the material. Then once again, I'm going to place my material pretty side down. With the setting changed, we're ready to go. But before I cut, I'm going to check my blade just to make sure it's clean. Okay, everything's ready, so I'll go ahead and load my material. And then when the C's flashing, we're ready to cut. Okay, we're done with the machine, so I can go ahead and close that up. And then once again, I'll just remove the cutting mat from the material. Okay, so it's time to weed our vinyl, and I really hate to waste a lot of vinyl, so I'm going to cut tightly around my design. Now just be careful though, because it's kind of hard to tell sometimes where your design is. All right, so I'm ready to start weeding. I'm just going to grab the corner of my heat transfer vinyl and pull up on it, and this will weed so nicely. Okay, so to see what else we need to weed, I just turn it over and look at it. I have a lot of the centers yet that need to come out. Okay. 
All right, now I told you to be careful and I realize that I accidentally cut away <laughs> my hashtag 13th birthday. So that is not a good move to make. It'll work out fine, but you just lose the benefit of attaching all your design together <laughs> when you don't keep them together. Okay, so I have that piece done, and you can see how beautiful this vinyl is. All right, trying to be a little bit more careful this time around the yellow design. So again, I'm just going to lift up on a corner. And just start pulling it back. This is the wonderful thing about most heat transfer vinyls is they are really, really easy to weed. Now you notice when you do attach your design together, you do waste a little bit more vinyl. And I know I do hate that part, but it does make it so much easier to lay it down on your shirt. All right, so we are ready to set this on our shirt and begin the press. Okay, I'm preheating my press and in looking at my two materials. I don't know if you can see this, but the glitter takes more heat. The glitter is 320 for 15 to 20 seconds and it's a hot pill. So I'll lay that down first. And then the solid is 285 to 305. It's hot or cold. So I'll lay that down second. My heat press is preheating. So once it gets up to temperature, we'll start our press. Now, earlier today, after I bought my shirt, I went ahead and put hot water on it, threw it in the dryer, got it nice and dry. Then I came upstairs and I actually pressed it under my heat press to get any remaining moisture out. I'd rather have my shirt shrink before I put my HTV on rather than after because the HTV is not going to shrink with it. Now we're getting close to being at temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and put the shirt under and preheat it for two to three seconds. I have my time set for sublimation, so I'll just have to keep track of that. Instead of resetting it, I'd rather just keep track of what time I have left with the 40 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and preheat this for a few seconds. Now to find the middle of my design, I'm just going to fold it in two and put a crease here. And then because I cut off the piece I shouldn't have cut off, I just want to set down the yellow for purposes of placing the rest of my turquoise. Now I have one issue here. I should have probably sliced this in Cricut Design Space. You're not supposed to put anything on top of glitter HTV. So when the time comes to put this down, I'll actually just use 
a knife blade or scissors or something and cut this tail away because it really should be behind it if I'm truly going to layer it. Okay, so really take your time in looking at this. And for example, I see that I failed to weed the middle out of my D. So I need to pull that up. Okay, and then I had another one. Let's see, where was it? Oh, the middle of my H. So don't get in too big of a hurry like I just did and really check it before you add any heat to your design. All right, so we need to pull off the yellow layer. Then I'm gonna add my Teflon sheet. Now I see I don't have this set right. I need to have this at 320. Okay, now that I'm up to the right temperature, I'll go ahead and press this. It says 15 to 20 seconds, but I'm gonna be pressing this multiple times. So I'm gonna stay somewhere around 12 seconds. Now the glitter was a hot peel, so I can go ahead and see if that'll come off. If it won't come off yet, I'll lay it back down for just a little bit longer. But it looks like it's going to come off just fine. Okay, that is pretty. So let's go ahead and put down our yellow layer. Now remember, I don't want that tail on top of the glitter. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my scissors. Okay, and we just cut that away. Like I said earlier, it would have been better if I sliced that off in Cricut Design Space, but this way works too. All right, I wanna make sure that I cover over the exposed glitter so I don't accidentally burn that or melt that. And then the max temp for this HTV is 305. So I'll go ahead and turn my temperature down. Okay, I went ahead and set it for 303. The instructions say anywhere between 285 and 305 is good. So I'll let this cool off and then we'll do this second press. Okay, here's the design we have. I think that looks good. So I'll go ahead and put that on my press. We'll make sure the entire design is covered so we don't accidentally melt what we've already pressed on. You're supposed to press this for 10 to 15 seconds. I'm going to go for the entire 15 seconds. So I'll stop this when I get to 25. Now the instructions say this is a hot or a cold peel. What I have found in the past is it does better as a cold peel. So I'm gonna let this cool down. I'll take Okay, I think that's cooled off enough. It's just that sometimes vinyl can be stretchy and you don't wanna pull the carrier sheet off and stretch the vinyl. Once it's cooled off, it's less apt to be stretchy. So I'm gonna remove this backing. All right, let's see, we're up to 300, that'll be good enough. I'm just gonna do a final pressing to make sure everything is adhered down really, really nicely. So 
So on the final press, I'm going to go for about 10 to 12 seconds. And there's my design, and it is so cute. I think she's going to love this. And despite that she's stuck at home on her 13th birthday, maybe this will bring just a little bit of joy to her day. Thanks so much for joining me. Until the next video, bye-bye.